Before we proceed to the video, for more LEAD AP O plus M study material, you can contact me on my email and on my LinkedIn as usual. Hello and welcome to Introduction to LEAD Operations and Maintenance V4. Uh, if you haven't seen the video for LEAD Introduction AP BD plus C, I would highly recommend that you watch it first because the basics of LEAD, like the purpose of LEAD, their business case, how it all started, when it all started, what does it mean, the impact categories, uh, and the last but not the least, the triple bottom lines, it all remains constant. I'm not going to be discussing it here, but I'm going to be providing a link in the video description so that you can watch that video as well. So the main thing that is different from BD plus C in this O plus M, these are the things that I'll be discussing in this video, which are lead rating systems. Uh, there are some difference in adaptations. In fact, there are less adaptations in O plus M and the credit categories are also less. Uh, the integrative process is not there. The certification levels, uh, since we are discussing uh, the credit categories and their points, so it would be important. MPR, almost similar. The scorecard is different because it is based on uh, the categories and uh, uh, their descriptions. The performance period, perhaps the most important thing to understand in a LEED O plus M uh, and in this video is the performance period and the certification program and the work plan, which has less number of steps as compared to uh, BD plus C. Uh, in general, there is not completely, but a different approach in terms of uh, fulfilling the intent of the same LEED purposes because uh, in this case, the operation and maintenance, you do not have flexibilities, few flex flexibilities which you, which you had in BD plus C. Uh, like you cannot select the location anymore because the building is existing. And also there are some things that you cannot reverse or uh, like the HVAC system is already installed. So either the upgrade might cost you too much. So you have to find a uh, you know smart ways in order to find a solution and also comply with all these requirements of lead so we will go through one by one in different slides and i'll be comparing it to bd plus c there would be two reasons first because whoever is trying to attempt o plus m for sure he would go through green associate which is the subset of bd plus c and uh, we will see it one once we go on that how they are relatable as well so we know about the rating systems. We have a voluntary consensus driven program to implement and measure green building, including design, construction, operation, and maintenance. We have five rating systems, BD plus C, ID plus C, that is interior design plus construction. We have O plus M, operation and maintenance, lead for homes is different. And then we have lead for neighborhood development. So as I said that I'd be comparing a little with the BD plus C because uh, we, uh, the, the prerequisite to this course is the green associate, which is the subset of BD plus C. So uh, the first comparison would be the adaptations. You can see that new construction and major renovation is being replaced by existing buildings, making perfect sense. And core and shell has been completely omitted because core and shell means that somebody has to come rent or lease the area, uh, whereas operation and maintenance is for the existing uh, running facility. So core and shell is Omitted. There is one small change that healthcare is considered as existing buildings. Uh, healthcare is not an adaptation in O plus M. Uh, if you ask me to be honest why they have omitted, I do not have any answer. Uh, I could not find any logic specifically, but uh, the reason might be that is, that, that is what I could interpret uh, that in operation and maintenance, there are not many special requirements for healthcare, which there were in BD plus C too much. Uh, they had special requirements for cadmium, copper, and other. Uh, if you have gone through BD plus C course, you would have uh, seen that so many credits were specifically for healthcare. So in operation and maintenance, so uh, I think it was not required. That's why they uh, put also the healthcare in the category of or adaptation of existing buildings. So we have in total for lead operation and maintenance only six adaptations. So for the adaptations, the existing buildings, which are basically all the buildings except the five below. It should not be a school, not be a retail data center 
uh, warehouse and hospitality buildings. So that's the reason healthcare is considered an existing building. The school's learning spaces, uh, kindergarten to 12th grade and optional for higher education like considering any admin building, retail, sale of consumer products, we know what it, what it is, data centers with uh, a requirement of more than 60% grass floor area for data center and for warehouse uh, to store goods, products, raw materials, hospitality includes all the short-term lodging inns, hotels and motels. Uh, the rating system selection is based on the previous rule 60 40 less than 40 it should not be used more than 60 should be used between 40 to 60 it's upon the project team for the lead credit categories the structure is similar we have a prerequisite for the category then we have credits to earn mac to earn the points the maximum number of points in lead ap o plus m is also 110 the intent adaptation requirement options with, uh, with the points uh, the relationship between the options could be or and and uh, you can go for either one of the options or both the options uh, the documentation there are certain standards uh, the formulas we'll be discussing it one by one the thing i wanted to mention here is first of all the credit categories is one less there is no integrative process here Secondly, uh, we have seen the project types are less. There are only six or adaptations, uh, which they call. Uh, and also, the point distribution is even. In the details or in the credits of each credit category, there are some special points, but it's very less. Unlike BD plus C, where uh, if you have seen in the green associate, there were many special credits for schools and uh, healthcare adaptation. But in this case, it's more or less apply to all adaptations a bird eye view to all credit categories in lead ap operation and maintenance first one being location and transportation which is focusing on the transportation patterns of uh, the building occupants that how they are going to and from the building and the purpose is to find a way in order to reduce the pollution from these trans transportation sources and the sustainable sites uh, which is to minimize the impact on e ecosystem and enhance and preserve biodiversity water efficiency is always talking about being efficient in use of water not even uh, not only in indoors but also outdoors the energy in atmosphere which is uh, in terms of the number of points the biggest category and it focuses on smart use of energy better energy performance efficient and the environmental protection when you use less energy it will uh, require uh, less energy to be produced and the way energy produced uh, pollutes the environment so using less energy equals environment protection the materials and resources uh, which is to reduce the environment uh, environmental impact of uh, building during its operation in a sense that whatever you buy and whatever you use in terms of materials uh, it has to be something or it has to be coming from uh, a company or a product that is using the sources efficiently and you have to uh, manage uh, manage your waste as well so it's not only what you are purchasing the cycle is that you purchase you use and then you throw so you have to be smart in purchasing the materials they are to be sustainable and also you have to be smart in your waste management the indoor environmental quality is always about uh, the comfort of uh, the building occupants so it's, it promotes better indoor air quality acoustics and daylights uh, the innovation and regional priority uh, if you are coming up uh, with any sort of uh, new strategy that is fulfilling the requirement of lead but it's not mentioned in uh, lead o plus m you might get uh, innovation credit but you have to fulfill the same criteria uh, giving the proper intent requirement and documentation and regional priority is usually uh, bonus points four points and it is based on where you are located the certification levels we have seen these lead o plus m points chart uh, in the credit categories and this after summing up all it will be 110 points out of which uh, 30, if you get 40 to 49 you'll be certified your building will be certified actually and if you have 50 to 59 points the building will be silver certified 60 to 79 will earn a gold and 80 plus would be platinum certified building and above does not apply for lead homes similar to what we saw in the bd plus c lead mpr which is minimum program requirements perhaps the first thing 
that you need to check when you decide to get your project or your building lead certified that either you comply with MPR or not. So three steps or three requirements uh, must be in a permanent location on existing land, which uh, takes out any mobile homes or trailers out of the equation. Uh, MPR2 must use reasonable lead boundaries with grass floor area of more than 2%. Everything should be defined in terms of boundaries and grass floor area is the area inside the building envelope uh, without the roof. So this is how you calculate and this GFA should be minimum uh, 1000 square feet in terms of operation and maintenance. The third requirement is that it must comply with project size requirements, which is similar to VD plus C. The, it was also 100 square feet in terms of ID plus C. It's less. It's 250 square feet. So uh, it, this is the first step or the first thing that you're going to think about when you want your uh, project or your building. Uh, to be lead certified you will see whether it complies with these three minimum program requirements or not lead ap o plus m scorecard that puts all the credit categories and their respective credit on one piece of paper and the purpose is to identify that which credits you will be trying to attempt and if you recall the structure of the credit categories uh, you remember there were uh, mandatory uh, prerequisites and there were optional credits so the mandatory uh, prerequisites are already uh, mentioned here with this with this small letter y which means yes you have to go for this if you do not follow or if you do not fulfill the intent and requirement of these prerequisites you will not be able to uh, get your project or your building lead certified so these are required as it is mentioned and the others are optional and then uh, in order to uh, find out whether you will apply or you will not apply so there is a yes no and maybe in between so some credits you would be sure about that i'll be attempting you can say yes some you will be sure about that you will be not attempting you will say no and some maybe depending on the situation so this is the scorecard it actually uh, summarizes for you and uh, give you targets that in which credit category uh, which credits you are targeting and which one you are leaving behind the performance period is perhaps the most important thing when it comes to lead operation and maintenance because this is what you will be submitting to uh, the gbci this is where you are going to measure your sustainable operations uh, it is based on the successful outcomes during this period that you will be submitting to gbci and this period should be continuous anything less than one week uh, any gap less than one week will not be considered but any period longer than one week will be considered as a gap so whatever you have applied as sustainable operations or sustainable practices it should be continuous and you have to define uh, the period of uh, of this uh, operation it must be minimum three months and maximum 24 months so uh, your performance period could be three months and uh, from three to 24 months and in, in between you cannot have any gaps longer than one week and the perhaps the most important in the performance period point is that they should all the performance periods should overlap must overlap and conclude within 30 days to each other if you see the uh, table below you can see different credits on the left where we have uh, water efficiency credit outdoor water use uh, we have sustainable site credit rainwater management you have a start date and then you have an end date the end date is the one that we will be focusing on because all the performance period either it is three months either it could be a one year period or two year or somewhere in between 15 months 16 months the end date should be within 60 days to each other uh, if you see here all of the credits they are ending in april 2015 it could be april 1 2022 20, as far as it's between april 1 and 30th this will be ac uh, acceptable by gbci now the certification application to be submitted within 60 days at the end of the performance period in the uh, below example or in the below chart you can see the last date of the performance period is april 26 2015 so 60 days from april 27th will be acceptable 
in terms of the certification application it has to be submitted within 60 days after the last performance period so two things to consider first of all all the performance period should be ending in between 30 days to each other and the last day of the last of uh, the last performance period or the one that is ending last should be uh, the, the certification application should be submitted from 60 days from the last one so for lease certification program a small reminder since it's certification it is for buildings so you've got two possibilities either you are certifying it for the first time which is the first possibility first time application the second is recertification if your building is already lead o plus m certified under any category it could be silver certified platinum or gold and the application or the previous certification is valid for five years you have to certify once every five years of initial certification and the flexibility is that if you want it's eligible as often as every 12 months so uh, you have uh, the flexibility of recertifying from one to five years anywhere in between and after five years the previous certification is going to expire now the second is lead volume and campus program we know that in certain cases when you have uh, multiple similar buildings considered as any uh, restaurant if they they have similar buildings and similar design which they want to implement in different locations they can streamline the prototype and it will be the cert, uh, certification of that design and they can implement it anywhere the lead campus program multiple projects on shared or site controlled by single entity on owner this is uh, one of the category and then you have uh, two approaches group approach or campus approach in which in the group approach you have multiple buildings but one certification in campus approach you have multiple buildings serving different purposes and each building is going to earn a separate certification for uh, for itself so a little change from lead ap bd plus c uh, work plan there were 11 steps back there usdbc recommend eight steps here uh, which are simple appropriate lead rating system adaptation selection we have seen 40 to 60 rule we can apply and select the rating system uh, then check mpr define lead project scope uh, it whether you will go for campus or volume or it's a single building develop lead scorecard which uh, credits you want to apply which you will not uh, which uh, you will think about later on assign roles and responsibilities very important you should have uh, people assigned to what they will be uh, accountable for or what they will be doing or performing in case of the performance periods the, you should have different uh, teams uh, working on uh, different categories somebody for example on water efficiency and the other one on energy and they should be working independently based on their performance period so then you have to determine the performance periods and you have to overlap all of them that they are uh, in a way that they end in 30 days to each other develop consistent documentation by consistency they mean that if you are uh, applying any fdes full-time equivalents or any use of water it should be consi consistent in all the documents the number of people should remain the same when it comes to the interior uh, air quality or any other calculations for fresh air uh, it should be consistent all over and then perform quality assurance review internally and submit for certification so these are the eight steps for lead operations and maintenance uh, which they call uh, lead o plus m work plan so this concludes the introduction of uh, lead ap o plus m and the purposes of lead and their bot triple bottom line and the business case etc uh, as I discussed earlier in the first slide, uh, you can watch uh, the other video. I'll provide the description there. So uh, we will continue with location and transportation. Thank you very much for your attention.